what you're looking at here is a comment that I received recently on one of my more humorous videos of late, Master Debating for Jesus. And uh, I've queued up the video to uh, one of the two hand gestures that she mentions, and for clarity, what I'm doing is what I do often when gesticulating, is pointing at something that isn't there. It's completely subconscious. My hands have a mind of their own. I don't control them. I'm even gesturing right now as I'm recording this audio. Now, what she's talking about is this, and it looks really awkward now because I'm doing it on purpose, but uh, a lot of times, it's, it's apparently a, a symbol for the devil. Who knew? But um, a lot of times what will happen is my, my middle and ring fingers will, will stay bound together, and that's because my finishing move is the mandible claw. And that's where you... It, you, you jam your uh, your middle and ring finger under the tongue of your opponent and uh, you use your thumb to push up on the jaw and uh, that paralyzes the jaw and makes it so your opponent can't bite down on your fingers and causes a great deal of pain. It was invented by Dr. Sam Shepard in 1969 or 70 and was popularized by Mick Foley under his uh, Mankind persona nearly 30 years later. Now. A couple of other hand gestures that I'm fond of is um, uh, what I call Sunday Drive and, uh, and, and the sidecar. And what the sidecar is, it's when, it's when you're fisting a chick and uh, you stick your thumb out for a little sidecar. Uh, a few other things to mention from that comment was uh, I wear a bowler, it's not a fedora. And... Uh, and it's my experience that the people that drive the most Christians away from the Christian faith is other Christians. Now, this video is going to be interesting because in this video I'm going to see just how many times I can say the word nigger. Now, you'll notice that in the corner of the screen, actually it's going to be this corner here, um, <clears throat> there's going to be, it's going to be flipped. So, my right is your left, yeah, it's going to be this, uh, this corner here, I think. Who knows? You can see it now, it doesn't matter. There's a counter in the corner of the screen, either this one or this one, and right now that counter's on one because I've only said the word nigger once. And now it's on two because I've just said nigger again. And now it's on three, and I think you get the point. Now, to begin, I want to make it expressly clear that I understand that the word nigger has its roots buried in a history of bigotry and hatred and causes a lot of discomfort for many, many people. But I would like to remind you... Ugh that the word nigger is just that, a word, and it is only offensive if you let it be. Now, with all that out of the way, I want to talk about a website that has recently come to my attention. It's called niggermania.com. Let's take a look. So when we bring up niggermania.com, we see all different sorts of things brought to you by uh, your web masses. Raptor Man, Shelly, and Reb Biker. Nigger Mania for nigger jokes and facts about nigger since 2003. Please join our nigger bashing forum too. The premier nigger bashing site on the internet. And then click here for the forums of nigger mania. And click here to donate to them. But then there's also these other things here. Uh, Tom Shelley's nigger mania page. Wild nigger animal park. Shelley publishing. I'm sure that's on the up and up the Back to Africa initiative, and much more. Raptor Man's Nigger Mania page, Coon Tack Tales, nigger and Collection of Essay... Uh, Coon Tack Tales... God, this is fucking hard to read. Coon Tack Tales, nigger and Collection of Nigger Essays... Essays is spelled wrong from the web. Reb Biker's famous AFNFAQ, the oldest nigger bashing page on the World Wide Web... And Groids Sucks Nigger Mania page, hilarious posters, animation smileys, and all kinds of bullshit. Anyway, fuck. 
What I'm interested in most is the forums. You go to their forums, and we have the Nigger Mania Forum News. Contributors of Nigger Mania, people who have contributed, get to post there, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, new member introductions. The main guest forum, which is the only place you can post if you don't register. Whatever nigger fixation and TNB is, that would be the general forum, forum of uh, Nigger Mania. Coon tax, nigger crime, video niggers, uppity niggers, nigger jokes, and the part of their forum that I found most interesting was the fact that they hate the Obama administration so much that they've dedicated five individual subforums to that administration. Nigger President Obama, nigger Barack Hussein Obama, nigger Obama videos, pictures, and jokes, nigger Barry Sotoro, and uh, nigger Mich Michelle Obama, transsexual silverback She-Hulk Boone. Credit where it's due. There's a, some creativity there. But that's not all. I never actually registered to the forums because then I would have had to come up with some kind of racist handle and it's just a lot more work than I was willing to do. But if you if you register to the site, you can uh, you can read other forums including nigger meeting, niggers in Africa, nigger graphics, etc. Now, I scoured this website for uh well several days, but uh tonight I did it for about an hour and I wanted to rinse my eyes with bleach. But <laughs> I came across a very interesting thread here, originally posted by Stinky Nigga, a new nigger maniac. What has fueled your hatred in niggers? Some or most of us were born as nigger-loving liberals with all the brainwashed tales of Monkey Luther King and the shit rights movement. God. But there was that one moment that has sparked our resentment to these feral apes. What was it? My story begins about two years ago in high school, so that puts this kid between the ages of 16 and 24 uh, during my lunch period. It was taco day, and, and it, everyone lined up at the counter to buy one. Everyone was all lined up in order until a group of dindus decided to cut everyone in front and buy more than one taco. I decided to confront them and ask them to show some common courtesy, and one of the apes told me to quit dick riding in what your time, Tim, mini dick, or I'll fuck you up back to China. God. I'm mostly white, but one quarter Korean from my mom's side, please don't hate. <laughs> uh, anyway. I wanted to punch this monkey right in his bubble lips, but I didn't because I'm dealing with a horde of four bucks and two she-boons as well as at least fifty other niggers in the room on standby waiting to chimp out on me and tell the school administration that they didn't do nothing. nothing. It's right in front of me and I can't even read it. Anyway, long story short, I got no tacos. The niggers just took one bite of each taco and threw it out, just wasting it and decided to lurk here for two more years to take my anger out. I think that should have been two sentences. And that is why I'm joining this civilized group of light-skinned humans. Now, you can scour this thread as long as you want, but I came across one response that I wanted to focus on. My mother and father instilled my good sense in me. Nothing good comes from niggers. And this goes to prove a very important point. And that point is that racism is learned behavior. It's not something that people are born with. It's not a natural intrinsic quality. It's something that is taught. And that's why it's perfectly okay to make fun of and hate racists. Because they choose to be racist. They choose to hate people based on the color of their skin, which is something that they can't control. You see that? Now, the racist will say that they only hate black people because of their behavior. And while I have gone on the record in the past and said that stereotypes are there for a reason, that was typically in defense 
of calling Muslims rape terrorists. And the difference is that being and remaining a Muslim are choices. Those are choices that people make out of ignorance. Being and remaining black are not choices. And this is why it's important that, uh, what was her name? Rachel Dolezal, that bitch from, I think, Seattle. This is why it's important that the idea of transracialism never takes hold. Because if it takes hold, that gives the racist something to stand on. Black people are only black because they choose to be black. You see how this is going to go with your fucking I'm okay, you're okay culture, I can be whatever race or gender or age I want to be? You're going to be adding fire to the fucking racists. Now, there was something else that was uh, very interesting that I found in that thread, and I think we ought to take a look at it now. All humans are welcome here at Niggermania. It is a safe place to vent our frustration from the never-ending nigger problem. So let me welcome you to the best website ever, Stinky Niggy. Enjoy and pass the word on to your human friends and family. There you go. It's a racist, safe space. And I know what some of you might be thinking. We gotta do something about this website. We gotta get it taken down. We can't do that. We can't. Because racists are some of the lowest people on the internet. They are just above child molesters and animal abusers and Nazis, which are a kind of racist. Everybody hates racists. They're one of the lowest common denominators. There's nothing worse for your internet reputation than being an outed racist. Now, because of this, racists are oppressed and marginalized constantly by people of the internet. All the time, racists are looked down on, they're spoken down to, they're hated and oppressed. And because of this, under social justice, we have to allow these minorities a safe space where they can say and do whatever they want to do. And just like any other social justice safe space, it's not like their bullshit is erupting anywhere else on the internet. But if we look at uh, Steve Shives, for example, he'll say that, you know, attacking the racists in their safe space is not the thing to do. What we ought to do is let the racists say their piece in their safe space and then confront them privately later. So what do we do about racism? Well, racism is just like social justice or any other religion where the best cause of action is preventative measures. Because once somebody becomes a racist, it's hard to turn them back away from that. The trick is to prevent racism from ever taking root. Now, you're watching this in the future, which means the final count has already been tallied. I'm not sure how many niggers I've said, but I think I've stayed true to myself and not called anybody a nigger in particular. In fact, the only times I've said the word nigger was when I was talking about the word nigger or in direct quotes. But I think I've amassed a decent number of niggers. If I haven't, then nigger, 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 nigger. <laughs>